Can you tell your sister, your brother, this week, God is going to visit with you. God is going to visit with you. And so be ready. Tell them with, 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 with some assurance, you know, you're not guessing. You see, when you're talking about God, we don't guess with God. Okay? When, you're, when, when, when we are uh, confirming God's word, you're not guessing. You see, you're saying that it now, it's now in God's court to confirm his word. And I want to assure you that this week, this week God is going to move in a powerful way. Praise the Lord. And senior pastor, many thanks for starting this one off. You know, I'm just hoping and trusting that maybe we will dub that name Breakthrough Worship so that it becomes an annual event. Praise the Lord. When we are skipping the year, we, we leave chains of the previous years behind. Praise the Lord. We go into the new year with newness of God. Praise the Lord. And so this, uh, this uh, evening, I'm really delighted to be standing here in front of these great people. I'm really excited that by God's grace, I'm starting this one off. The good things are coming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mimi ni John too na fungua njia. You know, the real stuff is coming. And so I want to encourage you, don't miss tomorrow. And don't miss Friday. Because I'm just opening the door. The things that you're hoping for are inside. Praise the Lord. And so determine to go inside. Um, can you just make a proclamation? I want us to do a spiritual I want us to do something that is spiritual. I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, say it with confidence, in the name of Jesus, I pull down every power, every principality, every authority that stands on my way with God's purposes. I pull them down in the name of Jesus. I pull them down in the name of Jesus. I will encounter God's purposes. I will encounter God's plan. I will encounter my destiny in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus a praise. Give Jesus a praise. Give Jesus a praise. Jesus a praise. And so, many thanks, senior pastor, for the opportunity. And many thanks, the pastoral team, Reverend Kiprop, Reverend Petronila, for the opportunity. You know I'm an amateur coming behind you. And so, <laughs> thank you. God bless you. Sawa, sawa. We want to dive into the word of God. And uh, as I've mentioned, I want to talk about what is being posted up there. The call to abide and serve. The call to abide and serve. Many times when in ministry, we normally come to a place in our expression to follow God. We normally come in a place where we, 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 we kind of find ourselves in distraction. We kind of find, find ourselves, you know, uh, grappling with acceptance, grappling with competition, grappling with approval. I don't know whether anybody has ever come. You're serving God, but you're struggling with approval. You're struggling with competition in ministry. You are serving God, but you're struggling with, you know, with acceptance. You don't know whether people are appreciating your effort. You don't know whether they're they are accepting you while serving God. But on the other side, when you go to pray, when you're waiting on God, people call you this lazy one this lazy one. And so today we want to draw a balance between serving and waiting on God. Right? We want to draw a line between serving and waiting on God. The call to abide and the call to serve. Praise the Lord. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll be looking at two characters in the Bible, two characters in the Bible that kind of contrast one another. But somehow, there is a thin line that brings them together and approves them to be serving God's purposes. 
they look like one is pulling on the other side and the other one is pulling on the other side. But somehow, we will see how the scriptures will pan and will direct us to a place that it is possible to serve God, but it's also possible to abide in the place of waiting on God. And so, throughout the New Testament, throughout creation, throughout creation, God's ambition, I mean, God's creative purpose has been for mankind to be, uh, to be fruitful. We can see this all from Genesis. The first thing after creation, after, after God had created Adam, he told him, be fruitful, multiply. God is talking about fruitfulness in the, in the beginning. Fruitfulness in the beginning. Through the prophets of the old, they envisioned a time where God's people would blossom, bud, and fill the face of the earth with godly fruit. And so, we see a case in the New Testament where Jesus is also talking about fruitfulness. God talked about fruitfulness in the, in the beginning. Jesus is talking about fruitfulness in the New Testament. And all this is referring to us. Jesus clarifies and he says, Now, if you want to bear fruits, ensure that you stick, you remain in me. If you want to bear much fruit, ensure that you don't detach yourself from me. I am the vine, you are the branch. A branch cannot bear any fruit if it's detached. And so those are the words of Jesus. Allow me now to read a scripture, that uh, our passage scripture in the book of Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. And I'm reading from, from New King James Version. I want us to use the New King James Version as posted up there. The word of God says in Luke chapter 10, verses 38, Now it happened as they went that he, en uh, that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also, and I want you to mark that word, who also, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But Martha was distracted. I also want you to mark that word distracted. Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him. And said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Mother, mother, twice, mother, mother, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part. Which will be, which will not be taken away from you, from her. And so, Father, as we bring your word this evening, Lord, I want to pray for clarity of communication, and I want to pray that my listeners, both here and on the online space, are anointed. Their ears are anointed. Their hearts are anointed to receive the word of God. We give you praise, even as we rebuke the distractor, whose work is to come and steal and to destroy. We want to pray that the word of God will fall on the good soil and bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, is a disciple called to sit or to serve? Are you called to sit or to serve? We want to respond to that question based on the passage that we have read. Are we called to sit <laughs> or to serve? Okay. The beautiful narrative captured in our text indicates that while Martha was busy trying to serve, Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to him. Both Martha, Martha and Mary appeared to be intention, intentional in doing something to the Lord. Martha thought that 
by serving the Lord, she was actually doing something for Jesus. And Mary on the other, th on the other side thought that by sitting at the feet of Jesus, she was actually doing something for Jesus. And so they were both convinced that their effort pleased the Lord. Martha was convinced, Mimi no nafanya kazi ya mungu. I'm the one doing God's work. And Mary was also convinced, Mimi, I'm the one doing, you know, what is required. I want us to look at these two people with some details. And then we'll draw a line, right? I want us to look at this. We're starting with Martha. And we look at, we want to look at Martha's serving significance. We read up there that Martha welcomed Jesus in her house. The house belonged to Martha. Did you read? <laughs> Did you read that? The house belonged to Martha. Martha welcomed Jesus in her house. Jesus was in his mission. In his mission. And in that place around Bethany, where Martha stayed. Jesus was in his mission, and Martha found an opportunity and say, This man. Let me see. I want to try him and invite him in my house. And indeed, Martha took the opportunity, invited Jesus in her house, and Jesus came in. And so, Martha thinks, now that I've welcomed Jesus in my house, should he just sit? You know, you know it's just good, and it's, 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 uh, it's just good manners. You know, when you invite a visitor, you prepare something for, for them, Right? When you invite a visitor, you prepare something for them. And what comes to mind is kitty kukula, what to eat, you know? And so Martha is busy with that. She's actually doing a good job. She's doing a good job. Martha wanted to serve Jesus. She thought that her house, you know, while serving, while, while serving, her her, you know, the work around the, the house became the most important thing. That became the most important thing. And uh, while doing that, she started being distracted because she wondered, how can I be serving while my sister is just sitting? My sister is just lazing at the feet of Jesus. This lazy girl, this lazy girl is just seated at the feet of Jesus. You know, and she comes to Jesus, to Jesus instead of asking her sister, kuja kidogo tuonge, you may attend. She goes to Jesus directly. Tell her, tell her, tell her to leave that place where she is sitting. You know, it is said that those things, her, you know, her attitude distracted her, distracted her. And so we want to look at how this went about. Number one, the Bible says that she was serving too much. She was serving. Did you read that? She was, not, she was not just serving. She was serving too much. And so we want to see the too much, right? What the too much did. Number one, the too much caused disbelief. Disbelief. We read down there that she said, do you not care? Now, when you're telling Jesus, do you not care? <laughs> do you, it, it means that you've, you've lacked faith in him, right? Do you not care? <laughs> you know? And so Jesus is saying, do, Martha is saying, do you not, you know, and uh, since she's talking to Jesus, we want to think that she's addressing Jesus. Do you not care? You know, people today blame Jesus for misfortune. You know, where was God when this thing was happening? Where were you? Where was God? We want to blame God even for our own making. And so Martha is at that place of disbelief. She's accusing, you know, she's accusing high authority for not caring. You know, we'll make a Martha kwa, Mary kwa story. <laughs> you, you are engaging Mary here while we are supposed to be working. Do you not care? Why can't you hold on? We, we, we work and then we'll come back and hear your story. For now, don't engage her. Do you not care? 
You know, that is Martha. We also find Martha revealing another cause of destruction. And this is called defensiveness. Defensiveness. Jesus, Martha says, my sister has left me to serve alone. In other words, I'm the only one doing the right thing and my sister is sitting. She protects, you know, she protects what she's doing. She's already ruled out that she's right and her sister is wrong. She's defending her position, defensiveness. While serving God, it is common to hear people complain of being overwhelmed. We read that Martha was doing too much. She was serving too much. And we'll talk about that too much. She was serving too much. And in serving too much, she complains. She complains of being overwhelmed. We are just, can't you see that we can't do much in this ministry? Can't you see, can't you see, you know, overwhelmed? And so, and so that is Martha for us. Number, number three, Martha demanded. She said, tell her. She did not go to Mary. She told Jesus, Ambia uyo mutu. Tell her. Tell her. It is common to hear prayers that direct God on what to do. Prayers that are directing God on what to do. And mostly, you know, on personal comfort. On personal advantage. And on personal entertainment. We love to be comfortable. We want to be, you know, entertained. We want to be in an advantage. You know, advantage. You know, we want to God to favor us. And so we'll tell God prayers that command him. Fanya hivi, fanya hivi, fanya hivi. Martha is a good example. Tell her. Yesu ambia yeye. We find another thing that rose from Martha's bitterness, desperation. Martha says, do you not care? Martha attempted to control the situation including Jesus. Martha tries to control the situation and including Jesus. Her desperation leads her to, leads her to a sense of Loneliness and self-righteousness and self-focus. Martha is seeing nothing else other than herself, self-righteousness, and loneliness. I'm alone. I'm serving alone. I am the one who is right. I am self-focus. She never thought about the sitting position from the right perspective. And so she's accusing her sister and placing all the good things, all the credit on herself. And so, let us look at, at verses 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving. Verses 40. Martha was distracted by what? Martha was distracted by much serving. Is it right to serve much? We will know. Okay? <laughs> we will know. But... It is coming out clearly from the verse that Martha was serving a lot, too much. To distract means to be drawn away. To be distracted means to be, drawn, to be driven about mentally. It means to be dragged in a different di direction. It means to be diverted. And so Martha was distracted. Martha was diverted. Her attention was diverted. And too much, too much means to a greater degree, more than necessary. There was a level, but she, she surpassed the level. She was serving too much. And so we can conclude that too much of mother serving dragged her from the main focus of her highest pri priority, which was learning from Jesus. The priority at this point was learning from Jesus. But too much, too much of serving distracted her from learning from Jesus. 
Let us also look at Mary and then we'll look at, you know, both. We'll compare both, right? And so Mary's significance. We've just looked at Martha's significance, okay? Martha's significance is that she welcomed Jesus in her house. She, took the, she grabbed the opportunity of welcoming Jesus in her house. Mary's significance. Verses 39. Who also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. And so now that sitting is not just sitting. In Jewish tradition, sitting had a profound meaning. In G Jewish tradition, sitting at the feet of the teacher, and they're called rabbis, had a great significance. Paul sat at the feet of one great teacher called Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a respected teacher those days. And it said that Paul sat under the feet of this great teacher. And when we read the book of Acts, Paul describes himself as a Pharisee of Pharisee after, you know, having sat under the feet of Gamaliel, Paul came out as a Pharisee of Pharisee. And so sitting was not just sitting. Sitting means you are listening, you are greeting, you know, you are being equipped. And so Paul is a good example of a man who sat. And so we are seeing Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. In other words, Jesus has approved her as a disciple. Jesus has approved Mary as a disciple to sit under the feet of Jesus. And, uh, and so Mary's significant. Mary, a woman in a male domain, you know, in a, basically most disciples in that age were male, were male figures. And so we are finding a woman sitting at the feet of Jesus and Jesus is not rebuking her. Jesus is not telling her, hey, come bali kidogo, hapo kuna ni malipa Peter, ni malipa John, Matthew, no natakana wakaya hapa. You know, Jesus did not tell her, please <laughs> find a better place, ukombali. She sat at the feet of Jesus. In other words, Jesus is approving that position of this lady, you know, breaking the walls and finding herself at the feet of Jesus. Mary Jesus is authentifying the sitting position of Mary as a disciple. But there's also another word. There's also another word. The Bible says, Mary who also. And I want us to look, I want us, I want us to look at this with some details. The Bible says, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at the feet of Jesus. Now, now, listen to me. Listen to me. Martha had a sister called Mary who also. Now, let, let, let me draw, draw you closer. Now, let me draw you closer. If I came to you and told you, Gregory has a brother who also drinks. Listen to me. Gregory has a brother who also drinks. What tells you about the character of Gregory? He drinks, right? Gregory drinks. And so he has a brother who also does what? Drinks. Now, let us connect that with this passage. And she, she had a sister called Mary who also sat at the feet of Jesus. What does it tell you about Martha? Martha also sat at the feet of Jesus. Are you hearing? And so we are not accusing Mary for what is Mary's doing. The Bible says that also Martha at some point sat at the feet of Jesus. Martha had a sister called Mary who also sat at the feet of Jesus. Sasa imeenda level, sindio? Ni draw, draw. Mary sits at the, at, at the feet of Jesus and also Martha at some point sits at the feet of Jesus. Hakuna accusation. Have we clarified that? Mary 
Martha had a sister called Mary who also sat at the feet of Jesus. That word also means likewise. That word also means in addition to. That word likewise means as well. That word like, likewise means furthermore. So we would say Mary likewise sat at the feet of Jesus. Mary in addition. And so what that tells us that Mary also served, right? In addition to sitting in the, at the feet of Jesus, she also, she also served, okay? Mary likewise, okay? In addition to sitting at the feet of Jesus, she also served, okay? And so, and so, Mary's good example. Let us look at Mary's good example. We have ruled that our tuote akuna mwenyako upandei na upandei ni uniform. They either sat and served or sat and served, but at this particular time, at this particular point, one was found sitting and the other one serving. Right? And so, Mary's good example. Mary chose the part of sitting at the feet of Jesus. You know, we sit at the feet of Jesus to hear his words of, of wisdom. We bow down at the feet of Jesus in worship. We kneel before him in prayer. We, you know, while sitting at the, face of, uh, at the feet of Jesus, we get discernment. I don't know whether I'm talking alone. Many times when I've waited upon the Lord, my discretion becomes clear. My understanding becomes clear. There is wisdom that is found sitting at the feet of Jesus. There is courage that comes by sitting at the feet of Jesus. And so while Mary was sitting of the, uh, at the feet of Jesus, you know, she was sitting there to express worship. She was sitting there to desire to understand. She was sitting there to, to, to gain clarity of understanding, to gain discernment, to gain courage, to gain understanding. Many things happen when we sit at the feet of Jesus. Many things happen. And Jesus said, when you sit under my feet, you know, when you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. And so the much fruit doesn't just come by sitting and being silent. While at the feet of Jesus, many things happen. While at the feet of Jesus, you gain wisdom. While at the feet of Jesus, you gain understanding. While at the feet of Jesus, you gain clarity. Clarity of judgment. Clarity. Things become more clear to you. And so Mary, while sitting at the feet of Jesus, was gathering all this. While Martha was serving, Mary was gaining an understanding. Mary was gaining. And so again, are we called to abide or serve? Are we called to abide or serve? Okay? Just like Martha and Mary, we are called to abide in Jesus and to serve. And I will explain why. Okay? I will explain. I know, I know we like siding with Mary. We like siding with Mary. Now, Martha, where, where? <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will tell you why, right? Okay? You know, it, it, it appears that Jesus was rebuking Martha, but I'll, I'll tell you. I'll just open your understanding in a short while. Right? And so, to serve means to perform a duty as required. To serve means to perform a duty as required. A branch will not complain one day and say, I'm not getting, suffi I'm not getting sufficient supply of water. So, nataka ni hame hapa chini yende ni onyeshe mizizi kazi ya kufanya. I want to move from this place and, you know, show the people down there what to do. A branch remains. And the work of a branch is to do what? To bear fruits. A branch bears fruit. That is the duty of a branch. The work of a branch is to bear fruit. And a branch must always, ever, remain in one place attached to the vine. 
I'm even waiting for a day where I'll wake up one day na nione my tree in the you know my fruit tree a branch that I normally see has moved eh a branch has moved from its place <laughs> there is nothing like that whether it's getting sufficient or not a branch will never move a branch will remain attached in one place and by remaining attached in one place it bears fruits now it is important to note that Jesus did not condemn Martha Jesus did not condemn Martha for serving he just corrected the dis, you know the, the destructive element Jesus corrected the distraction Ako kemea kusav Jesus corrected the distraction and so was Martha doing the right thing yes did she allow herself to be distracted yes is it possible to be doing the right thing and be distracted it is possible and so what do we learn from this we are learning that while doing the right thing remain attached right while serving remain attached to the lord don't let ministry be bigger than the one who gives grace to serve okay your ministry should never be bigger than jesus your serving should never be most the most important thing than the one that you're serving right we should never detach ourselves from the, what is the most important what is the priority jesus is say, told martha that martha martha mary has chosen the right thing there was the right thing there was the right thing to choose and jesus said that at this point in time what is important is sitting at this point in time what is important is waiting on the lord at this point in time what is important is prayer and fasting at this point in time what is important as you're starting the year is waiting on the lord to find direction maybe you're saying Monata, why have we not gone out with crusades it's january people are, are perishing you know people are perishing out there senior you are sleeping here why are we not out there there is time for that right but there is also time for waiting and so is it good to wait on the lord it is okay it's okay to wait on the lord is it good to serve it is okay but these things must operate within the right timing jesus was saying mary has found what is right at this point in time i didn't come here to be served tea what was important at this point in time is just for you to sit down tutakunywa chai siku nyingine for now just sit down and hear and mary has found what is right praise the lord my sisters and my brother i want to admonish us this evening that as we desire to serve as we desire to be fruitful in this year of abiding in god's presence let us also learn wisdom of mary the wisdom of sitting the wisdom of waiting on the lord the wisdom of waiting on the lord and as i bring this to a close in our aspiration to follow the call we will always find ourselves most like martha yes mostly like martha we will always find ourselves most like martha in a wave of distraction you know struggling to find acceptance struggling to find approval trying to beat others in competition you're serving but you're trying to beat others it becomes a competition when we find ourselves in such let us learn the wisdom of mary she appeared indecisive in indecisive at the feet of jesus however her choice of sitting patiently at the feet of Jesus received greatest award reward of G affirmation Jesus himself affirmed Mary can Jesus affirm you 
Can Jesus affirm you? Can Jesus affirm you? And do we have it in our mind that Jesus can only affirm us when we are active? Normally, it will appear like that is what we are all, you know, that it, it, it would appear like that's what Jesus is waiting for. For us to be busy, working, 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 serving, serving. Too much, too much, too much. And we hope that Jesus does say, Congratulations, my son. Congratulations. You know, there's a point of waiting and just hearing. And perhaps that could be the most important. Sitting and hearing the voice of Jesus. Sitting and hearing the voice of Jesus. Perhaps that is the most important thing. And so, in our service, in our many activities, Jesus is saying, Come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is possible to find rest in Jesus. It is possible to find rest while serving. Praise the Lord. And I'm speaking to people. I'm speaking to people this evening. You've been busy in the vineyard. You've been busy working. And perhaps while in the vineyard, while they are serving, bitterness is now rising. Bitterness is rising. Unafanya kazi ya mungu na machungu ya You are serving God's purposes and accusation is rising. You feel like those other people are not doing much. You are serving in God's vineyard, but you want somebody to tell you, congratulations, and they are not saying. They are not saying. You are looking for approval, and nobody is approving what you are doing. This evening, I want, to, I want to, to just affirm to you that one thing is needful. Find rest in the Lord Jesus. Find rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, laden, ministry burden, lot of work. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Come to me, and I will give you rest. I want to pray with somebody here. I want to pray with somebody here. The ministry burden has become heavy. Serving has become re heavy. And while serving, you're now finding yourself in bitterness. You're doing God's work, but bitterness, deep inside you, you know that there is some sense of bitterness. Deep inside of you, you know that there is some emptiness that has been looking for approval. Deep inside of you, you know that there has been some sense of competition. Those burdens can remain here tonight. You can go home a free person. We are calling this week breakthrough worship experience. The Lord is just about to begin with you right now to break, break from much serving. Serve God, yes, serve God, but it should never be, it should never be a burden. Serve God, pray, but don't let it be a burden. Serve God in, in those different ministries. But as you're serving God, also learn how to find rest in the same Lord. Learn how to find rest in the same, lo in the same Lord. I want to pray with somebody. I want to pray with somebody. I want to pray with somebody. And you're saying, my brother, you've just mentioned my case. You've just mentioned me. I want to pray with you. And I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand. I just want inside of you, on the inside of you, to believe. To believe with me. I want to pray with you. No asking of lifting of hands. But I want to pray that the Lord may give you rest. That you may find rest in the presence of the Lord. As you serve, it is good to serve. It is good to abide. Mary was right by sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha was right by serving. It is possible to serve. And while serving, it's also important to hear the voice of God. I want to pray with us. And so, Father, having heard your voice, 
we pray that, Lord, help us to come at the place of rest. Help us to come at the place of rest. We have been serving, we have been working tirelessly. Lord, inside us we knew that we were serving you. And yes, indeed, we were serving you. But Lord, bitterness found its way. Anxiety found its way. Need for acceptance found its way. Competition found its way. Need for approval found its way. And so this evening, Lord, you've told us that these are burdens that we don't have to carry. You're telling us, cast, cast those burdens upon me for I care. And you're promising us that, Lord, this evening we can walk out of, of this place free people without burdens on our shoulders. And therefore, Lord, we are bringing the burden at the foot of your cross. We are bringing the burdens at the altar. We are bringing the burdens in your presence. Lift them, Lord, out of us. We want to walk free. We want to walk light. We want to be lighter. O King of glory, we want to pray this evening that, Lord, help my sister, help my brother. They desire to bear much fruit for you. They desire to bear much fruit for you as they move forward. Lord, even after this fast, they desire to bear much fruit for you. It is only possible when she abides in you. It's only possible when he abides in you. It's only possible when they serve. And therefore, Lord, give them grace. Give us the grace. Give us the grace. Give us the grace. This evening, we are finding our freedom. This evening, we are walking free. This evening we're walking free from bitterness, free, free from need for acceptance, free from competition, free from need for approval. In the name of Jesus, we are walking free. Free, free in the name of Jesus. Free in the name of Jesus. The chains are breaking and your people are walking free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Many thanks, Lord, for having spoken even through our sister, Anita, that, Lord, when she needed you most, you came through for her. A testimony that even in the place of work, you can visit. And therefore, Lord, if the need is about the place of work, we are praying again. Come through. For any other person in the position of Anita, come through for them. In the workplace where we are working with people who are not born again, Lord, you've called us to be the light and the salt. Father, we want to pray that from this revival meeting, when, uh, when these people will go out there, Lord, a different light will be seen. The light of Jesus will shine brighter, brighter in the name of Jesus. At the places of work, the light of Jesus will shine brighter in the name of Jesus. And the darkness will flee. Darkness will flee. In the name of Jesus Christ, Con conspiracies and accusation, false accusation, will flee in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we set your people free. We set them free. In the market field, we set them free. In ministry, we set them free. In the name of Jesus Christ, they are walking free. In the name of Jesus, freedom is here. Breakthrough is here. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Just in one minute, go before the Lord. Go before the Lord. Go before the Lord. Express yourself before the Lord. Express yourself before the Lord. Express yourself before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just give Jesus a clap offering. Thank you, Jesus.